In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear family, today the church asks us to pray for vocations to, to holy order, to priesthood. I know that some of you have been praying for vocations, and I ask that we pray for vocations in a special way today and keep our seminarians in prayer. And to prepare for this Mass, let us ask God for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who willed to provide shepherds for your people, pour out in your church a spirit of piety and fortitude to raise up worthy ministers for your altars and make them ardent yet gentle heralds of your gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, they made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princesses, but without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to obtain innocence in Israel? The work of an artisan, no God at all, destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stalk of grain that forms no ear can yield no flower. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a stranger's. They are all for sacrifice, emulate flesh, and eat. The Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Your idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Your makers shall be like them, 
everyone that trusts in them. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. When I started driving newly, I was in St. Louis. I remember one day I got lost. And I was looking for a way to get back to the community. I didn't have any GPS, no cell phone at that time. So I saw someone, young man, walking in the street. I thought he could help me, show me directions. I stopped. I said to him, excuse me, sir, how do I get to High Ridge? And he looked at me and made wild gestures and some sound. I discovered that he could not talk. I don't understand sign language, and he couldn't understand me, but you could tell that he felt sorry that he could not help me. I bowed my head and said thank you to him and drove off. As I was driving, I was thinking about this man, someone who looked normal, his mouth looked normal. His tongue seemed normal. Why couldn't he talk? The force that stopped him from talking is in the inside. You can see it and you can tell that he cannot talk until you talk to him. And in this case, today in the gospel, we see someone who could not talk. But his case is different. 
because the force inside him that stopped him from talking is demonic. We don't know how he got to know about Jesus. If someone told him about Jesus, or his family told him about Jesus, and they came to him for healing. No one encounters Jesus and remains the same. There must be transformation and healing. So Jesus looked at him when he saw the cause of his problem, his muteness. He spoke life and healing into his body. And the power of the word of God dislodged the devil, the demon inside him, and he was set free and began to talk. Jesus is the demon destroyer. He comes to heal, comes to set free. So many people in our world today look normal on the outside. They dress well, they look well, but there is something inside them that obstructs life in their lives. I call that inner demon. An inner demon is anything that is not visible on the outside, but obstructs you from living joyful life. And some of us here have our own inner demons. Your own inner demon may be certain emotional hurt or unhealed painful memories. When people see you, you look okay until you reveal the struggle that you have in the inside. Have you come to Jesus? Have you asked him for healing? Jesus knows how to speak healing inside our bodies to make us whole. Your inner demon may be certain addiction, addiction to food, to alcohol, to technology, addiction to talking. As some people who are addicted to talking, they can't stop talking. Whatever is your addiction, it is an inner demon. Have you come to Jesus? Have you asked for healing? He knows how to make you whole. So that's that thing that blocks your joy will be taken out in your life. Your inner demon may be certain negative sentiments, sentiments of resentment or hate or jealousy or envy lodging inside us. It is an inner demon and it needs to be taken out so that you'll be free. Have you come to Jesus? He said, Lord, I have this inner demon of jealousy, of anger, of hatred. Take it away from me. The Lord will. So that you may live a joyful Christian life. Your inner demon may be certain crisis in your family. When you go home, your family becomes like a war zone. No peace. Dysfunctional family. And when you come in public, people think that everything is okay, but you know it is not okay. You are battling with your own inner demon. Have you come to Jesus and asked for healing? He always heals when we call upon him. 
the same Jesus who went through towns and villages healing is here today. And you will encounter him in the Eucharist. As you come to receive Jesus this morning, think about your own inner demon. And when you receive Jesus, mention your inner demon and ask him, Lord, heal me that I may be healed. First in, in God's compassion and mercy, let us confidently bring before him our prayer and petitions. For the church, may the Lord strengthen us in our mission to spread the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may the gifts of the Spirit form their decisions toward the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering because of illness, physical, mental, or spiritual, may the Lord comfort them and heal their affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here today, may the Lord encourage us in remaining faithful to our labor in the fields where he sends us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical professionals, that God may guide their hands and hearts, and that they may be protected from sickness as they care for those afflicted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Aldo Pedraja, may the Lord welcome them into the joy of his eternal presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and compassionate Father, Hear these prayers we offer with faith and humility and answer them in accordance with your divine will. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the <clears throat> sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all his holy church. Look kindly, we pray, O Lord, on the prayers and offerings of your people, that the stewards of your mysteries may grow in number and persevere always in your love. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, those gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Felipe, our Bishop, and all the clergy, 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Lord Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. But their brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Renewed with the bread of the heavenly table, we entreat you, O Lord, that through this sacrament of charity, the seeds you sow with great abundance in the fields of your church may come to maturity, so that many may make it their choice in life to serve you in their brothers and sisters, through Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us this morning. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And speak to God. Mm -hmm.